Welcome aboard a brand new episode of Hollow Victories. I am a tour guide on the Jungle Cruise ride. Skipper Dan is my name, and I am joined today by my haunted co-host. I'm Michael. Matt, go fuck yourself. <laughs> go fuck yourself. See, the, the one time I had a fake name prepared, you're like, oh, hey, it's me, Michael. I, <laughs> this doesn't even deserve a fake name, because this is dead serious. Um, <laughs> no, Ooh. fuck you. <laughs> Which is what ghosts say. <laughs> yeah, it is what ghosts say, right? <laughs> I was like, me, Chris, and Stuart were talking about doing an episode of uh, our Better Call Saul podcast today. And I was at work, like, finishing my shift up, like, excited for that, because we're on the season three finale, and it's such a good episode. And I'm like, oh, we're going to get to watch that and discuss, and I'm looking forward to that. And then Matt sends me a message reminding me that I have to watch fucking Haunted Mansion tonight. And it was like, all of the enthusiasm in me died. It was just oh. like... <laughs> I... No, I... <laughs> I, I know you were not looking forward to this one at all. I fucking played myself with this one because I the, one of my co-workers is out of town and one of them just got fired. Deservedly so. We're not going to go into it. Go into it. Uh, <laughs> so I've been... I, I've been working a lot this week. This is my one day off and I have to spend it watching <laughs> fucking Haunted Mansion. <laughs> Today is the matchup of uh, 2020s movies based on Disneyland rides. It's The Jungle Cruise versus Haunted Mansion, 2023. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we had a conversation about, like, uh, th theme park rides uh, last episode. You saw, it, it, obviously, Haunted Mansion is returning for this episode, but uh, did you go on? You, you went on The Jungle Cruise ride, it sounded like, too. I yeah, I went on the Jungle Cruise ride when I went with my family. I'm pretty sure that's one I skipped when I was there with my friends. Mm -hmm. Cause I I was I was there for a lot longer with my family, and I made like a deliberate effort to ride like every ride I could. Yeah, which was it's it's kind of nice. Like you go with your family, ride as many rides as you can, and then come back with your friends and ride only the rides you're interested in. But uh, J Jungle Cruise, I'm pretty sure, did not make the cut for the second trip. <laughs> I, you know, it kind of looks like a nice relaxing ride to go on, but it's not a very, it doesn't seem like a very thrilling one. Because I, I, that's another one that was on that VHS tape, though they didn't focus on it too much. It was a very small part of it. No, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very casual, just like, oh, uh, we're going to drift down the river and listen to a guy make bad jokes. Right. Yeah, so like I like I said, my all of my Disneyland or Disney World experience comes from that VHS tape I had, uh, which uh, I, I loved very much. That I watched it, I like I still remember basically everything on it because it was like a ritual for me every morning. But yeah, I don't know. Like I I knew very little about Jungle Cruise. I, I actually had to be reminded that that's like what that part of the video was. Like, oh, okay, that's Jungle Cruise. I get it. And there were some references I recognized from what I saw in the video, like the hippo and. The tribe people, like, that's that's all in there. Yeah, I mean, maybe we better get into it, because it's kind of weird how they integrate the ride with this one. So Jungle Cruise is a movie from 2021 about a scientist, Dr. Lily Houghton, who, who is venturing deep into the Amazon, because supposedly there is this great tree of life that will... Like, it, we, the, the petals of it will cure any disease and lift any curse. Uh, it's something Lope de Aguirre, a real conquistador. This was a real person who gets involved in the plot of this movie. He went searching for it, you know, hundreds of years ago. This is set in, like, World War One-ish? Like, maybe a little before World War One. So, you know, Aguirre has gone missing all these years ago, and now this uh, lady doctor is headed down the Amazon to try to find it. She she happens into this boat captain named Frank, and uh, who's, who's kind of like a shady dude who honestly kind of lies to get her on board. But, uh, you know, he gets her on board uh, with her brother, and they're going downstream to find this flower meanwhile the germans are chasing her because the germans want this secret 
tree of life power and and they have brought a submarine to the amazon river and and are chasing them down in a submarine and they also uh find aguirre and his men and bring them back to life as like zombies and there's actually i gotta say like kind of a good twist with uh dwayne the rock johnson's character frank because it's it's revealed that he was actually part of Aguirre's crew, and the whole of them were, like, cursed. That, like, if they ever lost sight of the river, they would be consumed by the forest. So he, he has, like, tricked them into being trapped in this place, and the Germans finally release them. Meanwhile, he has just, like, become a, a shady b- boat tour guide. He's a tour guide on the Jungle Cruise ride. Y- you know, um, um, part of, um... That twist, too, is that he is also, like, immortal, basically, for now, at least. And he, uh... But he's also trapped. And that was a reveal that they revealed early enough in the movie to where they it could actually have an impact and they could do stuff with it. And I just want to point that out now before we get to the other one. Um, anyways. Yeah, no, I, I think it was actually, like, a decent twist. Yeah, it was that was That was, like, well implemented into the movie. I, I will give them credit for that. They give you time with the characters to get to know them in the way that you know them. And then they, yeah, they, they have like a, uh, a, you know, they, they change something about one of the characters that makes the second half of the movie different from the first half. And I can appreciate that. Like, I, I kind of like the way it's introduced even because you, of course, have Frank the shady dude and like he, he brings this tribe of, uh, he, he like hires this tribe of fake natives to try to like scare off Emily Blunt's character because because he thinks it's too dangerous to go down the river and wants to like scare her off while there's still time but like by the time they reach that point in in the river he and Emily Blunt have kind of formed a relationship and she feels really betrayed by this and I'm like okay it's gonna be like this thing where she doesn't trust him anymore but then she he's gonna come in and save the day at the very end no he saves her in like the next scene and they just move on with it. And I'm like, you know what? Good work. I, this, this movie's kind of middle of the road. There's a lot I don't like about it, but I gotta give it credit for some stuff. It does do some stuff decently. How do you feel about it? I think it's a pretty average movie as a whole, but average, you know, average can mean two things. It can mean the entire thing is like not good, but like, not bad either or it can mean it's doing a lot of good things and a lot of bad things and i think it kind of falls into the boat of a lot of good things and a lot of bad things like this the humor is pretty bad some of the cg works but like some of the cg that really matters does not work and um it's also just like it's full of like cliches and tropes that you're gonna get out of these movies like there's some kid out there some you know maybe not like a small child but someone who's like 10 between ages 10 and 12 that watched this and this is going to be one of their favorite movies when they're an adult because like, it's going to be so nostalgic for them because it's for me it's almost kind of like me growing up with the national treasure movies where i i probably think those movies are better than they actually are because i grew up watching them because they're fun adventure movies jungle cruise is a fun adventure movie but it's just yeah. one that I, I really didn't need to see like it's it's kind of like what what was it john carter in that sense where i i didn't yeah. i did not mind watching it another disney movie too I had I had it like you know I had a, enough fun watching it to where I can't say it was miserable, but it was like I don't know I wasn't that int- I wasn't that into it. It's kind of middle of the road. I don't think I don't think it's reasonable for anyone to say it's like a piece of shit. But I also, if you think it's like this amazing movie, you either don't care that much about movies or you saw it when you were young. That's my thought process on that. Yeah, no, I'm with you. This is definitely one of those movies that's, like, not that good, but, like, I don't think a child would notice. I think a child would be really fascinated by this and then, like, kind of grow up and still have that, like, nostalgic attachment to it a little bit. Yeah. Like, like, incidentally, the first Haunted Mansion movie. (laughs) Yeah, honestly. I will say, um, visually, I think most of the movie is really solid, too, and that is important for this because it's kind of a spectacle movie. I think yeah. the one thing that really doesn't work, and there's only one thing I can call out that doesn't work, and it, but it's a big one, is the leopard, because I think that it's like, yes, there's too much focus on it. It's not like a quick thing. It's not, car- it's not a cartoonish thing like the villains. So 
the realism is more important. There are movies that have used real animals like that before. This movie probably like with Disney behind it probably could have set that up. But at the very least, if they were going to go the CG route, they needed to put fucking more into that because it's like they're interacting with this thing in very realistic ways and it doesn't look real once. There are movies a decade older than this film that have better CG than this. Yeah. And I mean, this is maybe something that we're going to have to confront with this episode about Disney is that they they tend to, you know, give like a huge workload to these visual effects people, not give them enough time to finish it, and then the CG looks bad and it's like, well, yeah, you didn't give them enough time or money to make it look good. Even though you're fucking Disney. You know what was like the most notable example of that for me ever from Disney? I'm going to bring Marvel into this. Black Panther? Yes. <laughs> no, exactly. Because Infinity War and Endgame looked wonderful. They were they were exactly what they needed to be. Maybe you could find some flaws here and there. Like, of course you are at CG and they're doing a lot with it. But it looked, clearly those two movies were a high priority and it looked wonderful black panther should have been a fucking a huge priority too though that was like such a cultural movie people <laughs> loved that and there was anticipation that people loved it it wasn't a surprise that people loved it and yeah the, the end of that movie looks like shit i think most of it looks fine but that final act that final battle it looks terrible and it's like no yeah i mean like disney what the fuck you could like you really couldn't have like shared a little bit of that with black panther yeah no i i mean this is like a problem with the industry, right? Yeah. Like, you flash back to, like, the the movies we were talking about last time. The CG in Haunted Mansion 2003 is not very good, because in 2003, CG was not very good. In these movies, the CG is not very good, because Disney refuses to pay their visual effects people enough, and, and give them enough time to make it look good. And this is, like, a consistent thing you hear from everyone in the visual effects yeah. industry. Fucking unionize. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Yeah. I'll get that out of the way. Uh, do you know who else? I mean, you, you know who else is not doing a good job in modern movies? The fucking lighting department. The lighting is abysmal in both of these movies. It's a little better in this one because they're not in the dark all the time. But even still, like, they're, like, inside a bar and the lighting is shit. And I'm like... You're inside! Set yeah. up another fucking light! Uh, and I mean, like, just just talking visually, I do think some of the action in this movie is pretty good. Like, the scene at the beginning where Emily Blunt is, like, trying to get the, the artifact away from all those guys, that's a fun scene. It's well shot. I liked it. It has better action than a bunch of Marvel movies, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was pretty, yeah, they, they were pretty creative with it, and it was pretty practical. Um, and that's another thing I'll give this movie credit for, as much C it yeah, it doesn't use a lot of CG, absolutely. But it doesn't 100% rely on it. There is practical shit in this movie. Yeah. There's some nice sets. Yeah, I think it's just like kind of, um, I think most of the film's problems come down to writing, which is going to be, yeah, it's going to be a common thing, with especially with Disney. They can be risk takers. Like, there's plenty of examples you can point out throughout their history I feel like it's been a while since we've gotten a Disney risk, though. I, I think the MCU was probably the last big one. Because it feels like they play it safe a lot. Even that, I think they kind of came in too late. Like, the, the MCU had kind of already started, and they're like, alright, we want in on this. Oh, Which, when I did mean, they, good when did call. They, wait, that, what, when did Disney purchase it? I, th I think before the first Avengers movie, but, like, they were already gearing up to the first Avengers movie. I guess I was unaware. I, I thought that they I thought they were behind Iron Man. I guess no, I'd be... I, I no. guess that'd be... Honestly... Iron Man, I guess Iron Man would be kind of weird as a Disney movie. That, movie. that one does feel tonally different for most of them. Yeah, no, if you, if, if you go back to the first Iron Man movie, it's, like, way more violent than any of the other MCU movies. The fucking Hulk movie is, like feels the most disconnected to that movie does i mean probably because like it's not even the same bruce banner but like holy shit that movie is like it doesn't it doesn't belong one character from that movie has returned in the mcu it's <laughs> it feels very disconnected but uh, let's let's try to stay focused here on jungle cruise <laughs> i mean you know i i don't have a ton to say about the movie as a whole i i think i've already kind of made my point about it uh, obviously we can get to cast and that's always like, we always get some good stuff out of that. I, is there anything like specific you wanted to bring up about it aside from what we've already said? Uh, let's talk about the length. 
Because this movie is like two fucking hours, yeah. and you feel every second of those two hours. An hour and a half would have been fine. I don't know why so many movies need to like need to go for the two hour runtime. It's like hour and a half is fine. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with making an hour and a half movie. If you have enough material for two hours, go for it. Uh, most adventure movies don't. I'm just gonna say that right now. I, I and I feel like it's kind of like the Marvel effect, like most Marvel movies, most Star Wars movies are like two, two and a half hours. Right. So they're trying to like make it that long. So you think, oh, this is like a big blockbuster action adventure. But most of those movies have like a shitload of characters in them. And that's kind of why. It's fucking, it's fucking Jungle Cruise. Like <laughs> this movie, this movie is PG-13. Don't ask me what makes it a PG-13. It seemed pretty PG to me. Like, this is absolute... This is, like, Disney PG-13. And even then, like... Like, the first Pirates of the Caribbean was PG-13. It's way more intense than this. You know what my favorite visual in this movie was? That I will give it, like, credit for even being kind of uncomfortable to look at? Sure. Uh, the bee... The, the bee guy. The one whose, like, body was, like, <laughs> basically formed into a bunch of beehives far from the first to do that. In fact, the first time I ever saw it done, and it was probably done before that, was um, Bioshock Infinite, because there was like a bee, a bee attack you could do. You basically shoot bees out of your arms. And there was like, and it looked very high V. I always thought that was such a... I, I, I have a thing with bees and wasps. They creep me out, like, specifically. So whenever someone can, like, incorporate, like, a cool visual of that, it, like, it works for me. It works for me so well. Just because it's like it's so uncomfortable, it's it, it takes me past my comfort zone. But I thought the I thought the B I thought the B visuals in this were really cool. I, I like those a lot, so I give them credit for that. And that and you know, it's like it's a little uncomfortable to look at too. They 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 did a pretty good job with the design. It's a little creepy. Like just imagining like you have these hives in your skin, and there's like insects inside of you, bees, let alone the ones that can sting. You know, it's like ugh. I, I like that the bees, like, go out to, like, the fucking Jesse Plemons ship and guide him. Like, that that was, that was like, so over-the-top and campy and, like, silly, but I loved that. Like, that's, more, more stuff like that would make me like this movie more. Yeah. Uh, I alluded to it before, but I, I think we do need to talk about how this ties into the actual Jungle Cruise ride. Because there's not much of a story to the Jungle Cruise ride, so you could really do fucking anything as long as it's set on, like, a river in the jungle. Right. But the crazy thing is, at the start of the movie, it seems like Dwayne Johnson's character has set up, like, his own low-budget version of the Disney ride... Like, there's the fake hippo, and there's, like, other stuff. Like, there's a fake waterfall. He has fake Indians show up. And it's like, I don't know that that really works in this movie because he's on the actual jungle river. He's actually putting on a jungle cruise. And, like, like I, I, I get it to set him up as, like, kind of a shifty con man. But, like, it's, it's, weird. it's, it's weird, too, because he comments on stuff that are not fake. That are also from the ride. Like he points out some toucans and he points out a snake. And it's real toucans and a real snake. Yeah. Maybe. I I, I don't know. Like you'd have to like. You'd have to like kind of. I, I could think of excuses for it. But it's excuses I feel the movie should have offered. Like oh maybe people weren't that into his original tour. So he found, felt like he had to like spice it up with a few things. Stuff like that. Like. Because he doesn't want, he also doesn't want to show like the truly dangerous stuff because these are a bunch of tour guides and he knows how bad it can be. So like, it's kind of like, um, okay, what's some bullshit I can throw in here to get people coming and sit on them? It, it even kind of works in the sense that you're seeing like what he's become, where like he, <laughs> he, he, yeah, he is just kind of this lame guy who has to bullshit people and calm people out with this like shitty tourist attraction now. Yeah, but well, like one of the things he fakes. F that is from the ride is the classic there is the backside of water but the joke there is that that's fucking lame and it's it's funny that they always point that out on the jungle cruise ride because it's the lamest thing and like he had to set that up himself to make that joke yeah no i mean i i think you're i think you're right i just think i i understand the mindset i think it could have been executed better yeah, I think a lot of things in this movie could be executed better, and it mainly comes down to character. True, um, true. Because the characters aren't like 
god awful in this movie, but I it, it's kind of like I think there's a lot of wasted potential, and I feel that I feel the same way about Haunted Mansion 2023. A little bit harder with Haunted Mansion 2023, a lot harder with Haunted Mansion 2023. But like <laughs> the character, I, although I will say I'll give Haunted Mansion this. I think that that movie has like if it executed the characters correctly, they're more interesting characters than the, this movie's offering. I just think this movie did a better job with the characters they set up. I think that um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, you know, charming enough main character, I think he does fine in this. I, I mean, I almost, I, I do feel like with some retooling, you could make this like a pretty decent movie. I don't think the casting is bad. I, Jesse Plemons as like this like Nazi-like villain. That, that work, you can do that with Jesse Plemons. Uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson being this generic hero. Uh, but with a little bit of a tragic backstory, you can do that with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. It, it's it's part of the classic Dwayne the Rock Johnson in the Jungle trilogy, along with uh, Jumanji and Rampage. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So was, there was that image going around of like these are all different movies, and it's Dwayne the Rock Johnson in the exact same outfit. Hey, Michael, <laughs> guess what? Next week we're doing, or next next time we're doing Rampage versus Jumanji. <laughs> Hope you're fucking ready no, for that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> that would put Dwayne doing... Dark Johnson at fucking king, wouldn't it? Yeah, that, we're doing Rampage versus Skyscraper. Because <laughs> I know that's your oh, favorite movie. I, I do genuinely like Skyscraper. It's just unfo the only unfortunate thing about that movie is the so bad it's good parts of it are a little spaced out. But holy shit. <laughs> at its at at its peak, it is like one of the dumbest fucking movies I've ever seen, and I love it for that. <laughs> have you seen Skyscraper? Or have you only heard me talk I, about it? I I have I have seen Skyscraper. At its peak, it's it's so fucking good. At its peak, <laughs> there are there are some really funny moments in that movie. Yeah, the the ending especially. I love I love that. Anyway, yeah, someday that'd be nice. But uh, you, you'll do your thing. I trust you. Uh, just find diehard knockoffs. That, that won't be hard. No, no, not at all. <laughs> you know, Pirates, uh, let's take a look at the first two Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Those were really, I was, cause I was trying to think of like good theme park attraction rides. Like if we wanted to do an out of the ring, which I don't think we're going to. And I was thinking, I was trying to think to myself, is there a good Disney theme park ride movie? Because they all seem kind of off. And I was like, oh yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean. That's a huge one. But it definitely went on longer than it needed to. Like, I mean, how many were there? Five, six? Five. Yeah, like... I'm, I, 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 I really thought there were more than that. I think there probably would be, but then... Not, not to get into this, but Depp versus Herd, like, that, yes. was, that probably yeah. hurt that. Jesse Plemons says Shiza in this movie. He did. So there's a, there's a Disney movie where a character says shit. <laughs> That's probably why it's... That line is why it's PG-13. Because he said Shiza. <laughs> probably. I, what else would what else would there be? I'm trying to think about that. Maybe just like... Is it PG-13 or PG? It is PG-13. Because yeah, PG would take fucking nothing. What? Yeah, what else is there in that movie? I mean, maybe like... Like there's a little violence? Little violence? Like not even that much. I guess it could be a little scary at points. But, like, sure. for, like, a kid, like, I don't know. And that's kind of a stretch. I, I could have handled this movie when I was a kid. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, they, they, you might, you, that, you might be, like, be spot on with that. It might just be because of that. Because I, I mean, it, it's a pretty easy going movie. I, I mean, Dwayne does, okay, it might be the sword scene, too, where they're trying to pull the sword out. That was kind of graphic, but just because it's, just because you're watching the pole, not because there's any blood or anything. Anything else before we get to cast them? Uh, nope, that was all I had. I do have plenty to say about this cast, though. Oh, yeah. Can I start with a completely random person just because I, I, it's on my mind and I want to talk about it? Sure. I genuinely think this movie would have been better. I, I'm trying to think of fun character dynamics. If Paul Giamatti's character went on the Jungle Cruise with them and he became, like, a less shitty person in the process... I think that would have been interesting. I think that would have been fun. I thought his character was over the top and stupid and silly enough to where I was like, okay, I kind of, I kind of want to see more of this guy. Uh, I, I think him go, I think him accidentally getting torn up into that, 
uh, that could have been fun. It could have been fun watching him become less of a scumbag by the end of it. But maybe, maybe I don't know. Like, maybe that's, like, a little too campy or a little too silly. But I thought it would have been fun. I was I was completely open to that. I thought that might be where they were going with that for a second. And then, no, he's, he's completely gone until the end of the movie. See, I, I was prepared to come in here and be like, oh, fucking Jesse Plemons, Paul Giamatti, you're both better than this, and both of them are doing these stupid foreign accents. <laughs> and you're like, it's campy and fun. And I'm like, well, you're right. It is. Th- those are two of the funniest parts of the movie, are just Paul Giamatti and Jesse Plemons' really bad foreign accents. Really yeah. goofy. I shouldn't say bad. Really goofy foreign accents. They're they're clearly both playing it up. Like I don't think they're unaware. But it's yeah, you can definitely you can look at it that way. I'm not gonna argue with anyone who looks at it that way. Like it's it's not good. It's just I think they both know what they're doing. I think they both know what they signed up for. And I think you're right. Like it, it probably would have been funny if Paul Giamatti had joined them. And he doesn't have to be, like, an angel by the end of it. He just needs to be like, oh, I'm not going to make you pay off your debt anymore, you know? Like, that's, yeah. that's all you need. <laughs> like, you don't have to make him do a complete 180. He's just less of a douchebag by the end of it. Dwayne The Rock Johnson returns after Southland Tales. It's kind of kind of weird that that's the only <laughs> movie of his we've seen up to this point. He could show um, up. He could definitely keep showing up. You know, he's he's definitely, like, a contender for continued appearances on this show. And uh, Emily Blunt as the lady doctor. They have, like, it's super obvious that these two are going to get in a romance early on. But I'll give them credit, like, there is, like, good build-up to that. Like, they don't, they don't just go, oh, uh, male lead and female lead, you're together now. They, they actually, like, have chemistry you know they have scenes together where you kind of like start to believe them as a couple and and so and and of course there's like this big thing attached to it at the end where like when Dwayne the Rock Johnson gets the the tree of life leaf he can either rest in peace finally or he can choose to just become a mortal man and live out the rest of his days and you know he's he's insistent like no I'm gonna I'm gonna die I'm gonna like rest in peace but then, you know, over the course of the movie, he gets really attached to Emily Blunt, and at the end, he decides to stay with her, right? Yeah. So, like, I don't think it's, like, the greatest romance ever put to film or anything, but, like, they put effort into this, which is more than I can say for a lot of movies, including one we'll be talking about in a minute. <laughs> yeah, where, where you make it to the end, like, there are a couple, and I guess, like... <laughs> no, fuck him. I want to say this about Dwayne the Rock Johnson's character. With that in mind, I, I look, I, I, I kind of always take things to like someone should die, you know. But like, I don't know. I, I a part of me feels like, especially with the PG thirteen rate, and you could have him. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like that's an interesting thing to explore. Like him, uh, him deciding to go through with that, you know. Like it's like, it's kind of like someone that makes the story more tragic. But what? you gain from the story is how much her and her brother grew. Is it her brother or is it someone he met? Yeah, it, it is her. It is her brother. Okay. <laughs> we we got to talk about him. Yeah. I, I kind of was open to the idea. I, I didn't think he would, but I was kind of open to like end him with him saying like, I'm, I'm I, I liked the idea of him. Like he found his peace a long time ago and he's just been waiting to be able to like finally relate to it. I get why they went the direction they did. I'm not going to give them too much shit for that. I think that would have been interesting, though. I do. I I think that would have made for uh, a more thoughtful experience, but we're talking about a Disney Park ride movie now, so I, yeah. well, for what they did, I, it's fine. You're right. They, it, it could have, they, they could have been a lot worse than that. Let's talk about McGregor, Emily Blunt's brother in the movie. He is the one character I got laughs out of. Like, more than once he said something that I laughed at. And he's, like, the only character I think I can say that about. There is one scene in this movie where he, like, sits down with Dwayne The Rock Johnson and talks about, like, how he was kind of disowned by his family because he was gay. But, like, Emily Blunt, she was there for him. She stood by him, and that's that's why he's, like out here doing this for her even though he clearly does not want to be and afterwards i'm kind of like 
Man, it was weird that that character had, like, one and only one scene where he talks about being gay, and then I'm like, wait a minute, this is Disney. No, it fucking isn't. Right. No, that was so they could edit it out. That was so they could fucking edit yeah, it no, out. Yeah, no, that... I, I guarantee that scene did not make it to China. <laughs> you seem to really like the character. You were commenting on how he was the character bringing the most laughs during this. Yeah. No, I, I laughed a few times at him. Although, it's now a week later, I couldn't tell you a single joke he said that made me laugh. But Yeah, like, I, I, I was okay with him. I, at first, I was very annoyed with him because I was just like, I've got his whole character figured out and all that. But uh, it, it's it's fine. He, he he's a charming enough character. He's not like he's not unlikable in any way. Uh, you're you're kind of just seeing him become less of a pussy. That's like he's becoming less of a pushover. They do the Princess Vespa joke from Spaceballs, where he insists on bringing like all of this unnecessary luggage with him. Although there, there's like kind of a cute moment with that where like he's describing what's in every box and like one of them he's like the booze and Dwayne Johnson's like all right that one can stay <laughs> that might that might be another thing that has landed this with a PG thirteen Dwayne the Rock Johnson drinks a lot in this movie oh yeah you're right you're all right they do that it's like like quite a bit of drinking in I mean, this the, movie there's kind of a psychological side of it too where it's like him debating whether he wants to die or not, you know, like that could be interpreted in a way. I mean, yeah. if, he, if, if he has the choice to, if he has the choice to keep li going on living and he's choosing, he's debating on choosing not to like, I mean, that could kind of be interpreted as suicide in a way. So I, I could yeah. see them, I could see them giving it the PG 13 for that too. Anyone else? Cause um. honest to God, I think with um, Haunted Mansion, we're going to have something to say about a ton of the cast members with this one. It's really just, like, you know, those three main characters and then two campy villains of Jesse Plemons and Paul Giamatti. Obviously, there's others in it, too, but... Edgar Ramirez is a guire. Mm-hmm. Uh, not as good as Klaus Kaczynski. That's all I'm gonna say. All right. Let's talk about the director, Jaume Colette Serra. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm saying that even close. Uh, it's probably Jaume Colette Serra, because he's Spanish. Colesera, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. He directed, like, the shitty Paris Hilton House of Wax remake. <laughs> uh, he did a bunch of Liam Neeson action movies. He did a movie called The Shallows from, like, 2016 that I... Like, a friend of mine was like, hey, that was pretty decent, and I watched it, and I'm like, yeah, that was fine. Do you know what he um did... Uh last or uh, two years ago now uh black adam yes starring dwayne the rock johnson yes i guess they like working with each other the film that has like kind of thrown dwayne johnson into like crisis mode <laughs> like i don't he's he's been weird since that one failed i've heard some like i, I i've heard some like extremely egotistical things from him since then like it's like um, oh yeah Calm, uh, calm down. This is not how you hold a charismatic image. You do not seem humble at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, Dwayne Johnson, he's he's a fairly charismatic guy. I, I mean, just to compare him to someone he has beefed with often, he's, like, way more charismatic than Vin Diesel. For you know? sure. Fucking the most, but... most charismatic Vin Diesel is his fucking group. Uh, Iron Giant. Oh, was he an Iron Giant? Yeah, he's the he is the Iron Giant. It sounds I mean it's kind of similar to Groot, but you know. I mean, yeah, I know it's like a similar thing where like they give him very I, simple I things to say. I loved Iron Giant when I was a kid. I never revisited it. I need to. I I watched that uh, probably 4 or 5 years ago now. Never revisited I, I, it, not once. I enjoyed it. I was really surprised by how like brisk the pace on that was. Like it ended, and I'm like, it's over. That felt like thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson, yeah, just like dude, you're not helping your career by acting like that. You're you you are you are the wholesome guy. You know who? I, like when I, when I think of Dwayne the Rock Johnson, what I think of is like, and I'm not. I know I'm not the first person to say this. Plenty of people said this. Bring him on the fucking Oscars instead of Jimmy Kimmel. But if he's gonna act like that, then he's might as well be fucking Jimmy Kimmel. No, he's, he's, like, a charismatic guy, but, like, he has definitely done nothing to, like, make himself seem like a decent person these past few years. And also, he's, like, generally not in very good movies. Like, yeah. 
I could name like three or four Vin Diesel movies I enjoy more than like any Dwayne Johnson movie I have seen. Um, I'll give uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I mean, I can't even give it to him because I haven't seen this movie yet. I've just, I heard his song in it though and I liked it. Moana, that's something. Moana is probably the best thing I have seen him in. I haven't seen that movie. I would like to watch it. I wasn't. I, I enjoyed it. I didn't, like, love it or anything. Dwayne Johnson is, like, one of the highlights of that movie. I, I want to see what Shea Frillis sees in that fucking crab. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I heard the song You're Welcome, and it's, yeah, it's, I mean, honest to God, it's for someone who's not really a singer, that was about as good as you can get. Like, that was, that was, it sounded very good. <laughs> like, it, it's not like, I, I, don't, I don't listen to that voice and think, like, this is a great singing voice, but I do listen to that voice and this is a great character singing voice. Yeah. Anyone else we want to talk about in uh, Jungle Cruise, cast-wise? I mean, we barely talked about Emily Blunt, but I mean, she was fine. Yeah, we talked about her relationship with uh, Dwayne Johnson. She was a tough female protagonist, and she was fine. I, yeah. I, I don't, I, I can't say anything bad about the performance, uh, Honestly, Emily Blunt is not one of my favorite actors. Like I, I, I've seen her and stuff, and I always just kind of feel like she, she does the, she does the part well. I remember seeing a Quiet Place. She does the job fine. Yeah. Um. Did you watch Oppenheimer? Yes. Oh, she was pretty good in Oppenheimer. She was. Yeah, I liked, I liked her yeah. in Oppenheimer. Yeah, she. But like, she was a good opposing voice. She. Yeah, she's. She's like. A pretty good actress. I don't. I don't think I've ever been blown away by her, but I feel like I could. I feel like if you you gave her like a really good role, I, like she could, you know, re- really elevate it. No, nah, I I've got no uh, no one else I want to talk about. Michael, tell us about Haunted Mansion twenty twenty three. Well, Haunted Mansion, released in twenty twenty three, directed by Justin Seaman. Is that how do you pr- Seaman? So how do you pronounce that? I Simeon? Simeon? Listen, listen, I I know someone whose last name is Seaman. All right, Justin it Seaman. might just be Seaman. <laughs> Justin Seaman. Uh tells the tale. Okay, this 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 might be Simeon. Uh Simeon? I don't know. Um tells the story of a man who lost his wife, not that you would know that it's his wife or she's dead because they had to save that for plot reveals later in the movie. In fact, they kind of glance over that really quickly at the start of the film. Uh, how he uh, he was building this camera that can capture footage of ghosts and he's been struggling with this project for many years, losing hope. But then one day Owen Wilson comes to his, do- his door and tells him about this mother, single mother and her child who are having a hard time in this new place they're staying at. It's haunted. He goes there. It doesn't really take it that seriously, but when he leaves, he realizes that the horror has come back home with him. The haunting has come back to his house. So when he goes back there, he realizes that's what also happened to them and why they haven't left the, haunt, left the haunted house yet because they're trying to create a reason that, well, why would they stay in the haunted house? That's the reason. Follows them home, so now they're all just trying to deal with it. They also manipulate other people to going into the haunted mansion with them and experience in this. And I guess that's just kind of their way of, like, doing a wholesome found family um, story. I, I feel like there's some cults with similar storylines, honestly. And, yeah, they're just trying to get to the bottom of this and figure out how they can not only free some of these spirits, but also free themselves from the hell that leaves them every time they leave this mansion. We learn a little bit about the characters as we go along the way. It's very much an es- ensemble cast. And I think that potentially each of these characters could work. I think there's an idea, a solid idea behind every single one of them. I think execution-wise, it's not dealt with very well. I think, yeah, it's rough. This one's a little rough, and it's sad because I can see a good movie in this one. I kind of appreciate the changes they tried to make from the first Haunted Mansion, but we are left with a movie with way less intriguing visuals than the first one. And I want to remind you all that this was quite literally made 20 years after the original, so that is not good. Matt, what did you think of this movie? <sighs> I, it was maybe a little better than I was expecting it to be. Mm-hmm. I got laughs. There are things I think I could compliment. But for the most part, it's pretty bad. Yeah. It's pretty bad. I did not enjoy myself with this one. I got pretty angry several times <laughs> when we were watching this together. I didn't get angry so much, but there were moments where I was like, wow, this film sucks. I... 
think it's a waste of talent at some points because on one of the scenes I remember where you specifically said that is when Lakeith Stanfield, who's too good for this movie, Tiffany Haddish, as you said, too good for this movie, Danny DeVito and Owen Wilson can be better than this, but they also often are this, so I'm not going to say that they can be better than this. I, lo- I-, I like both of them, Danny DeVito more than Owen Wilson. I gotta say Tiffany Haddish and Lakeith Stanfield, yeah, you, you both are better than this. Lakeith Stanfield, he has a scene where he's talking about how his wife died, and I believed his emotion. It's not a well-written movie, but I thought he gave such a good performance that I believed it, and then it's immediately interrupted with the fucking... It's, it's Danny DeVito just, like, making fun of his wife for being fat. And, like, I could give it a pass if the idea is he's just trying to make him laugh. That's clearly the point. It's like trying to, you know, lighten up the mood for a friend of his. But one, these two aren't that close. <laughs> Honestly, Lakeith Stanfield tried to fucking rob Danny DeVito earlier, uh, like, and destroyed some of his documents, some of his research. Like, they don't have a reason to be close with each other. And on top of that, on top of that, yeah, it's just not a very good taste joke to make in a situation like that. It's just like, what the fuck was she in? Like, it's, I don't know. I'll tell you this much, though. His wife had some good tastes. (laughs) Because she's fat. Yeah, it was shit like that. Like, it's just like, I get what they're going for. I do, but I, I, I don't think that saying that... It doesn't work. In a real it situation, doesn't work at all. <laughs> I don't think saying that in a real situation would make everybody angry. I think it would just make everybody uncomfortable. Like, did you, did you really just say that? Really? <laughs> did, did, did you think now was the time for that? It, like, dude, come on, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I appreciate what they're trying to do with this movie in so many cases. Because, okay, like... Lakeith Stanfield, his character, his motivation, I think that's all fine. Should have focused on the wife more. Should have, like, actually had, showed the relationship before she was gone. Shouldn't have made it a reveal that she was dead. Just show that from the fucking start of the movie. Okay. I, I, I feel like it's pretty, well, like, I feel like it's pretty easy to infer that she is dead at the start of this. I agree. I don't know why you had a problem with that. No, I agree that it's not that hard to figure that out, but... Why does it need to be treated like a reveal? Why can't that just be... Because the opening scene with her is so fucking quick. And then it just immediately cuts them at the bar, depressed. Like, it's like, no, just... If you want me to care about the relationship he has with this woman, focus on it a little bit more. You don't have to give it... You don't have to give it a lot of time. Fuck, you know what other Disney movie did that? And they did it very well up. You know, it, it's very possible to oh, yeah. show that... In a brief amount of time. You do not have to... That movie spent 10 minutes on that. You don't even have to spend 10 minutes on it. They gave it 30 fucking seconds. And, and, and like, near the end of the movie, he has this, like, sad flashback to his wife. And it's, it's like, okay, but this doesn't really feel earned. Yeah, I don't, I don't think what happens if Lakeith Stanfield's character works at all. And I think the performance, I think he's trying his heart out. I give, I, I give him props for the performance, but it's just... <sighs> The script is working against him way too often. The character is not well developed. I think the kid has a you know decent arc with him and the father. I think you know making that parallel of him kind of being a new father That's... figure is something that works. But I don't think. I, I mean, we're we're talking about like oh, where they're treating like uh, Lakeith Stanfield's wife being dead as a reveal. You and I somehow got on like like I was under the impression that the kid's father was just absentee from the start of the movie. And you were like, oh, he's dead. And then later when the kid's like, oh, I talked to my father. You're like, I thought he was dead. And I'm like, no, it kind of seemed like he was just supposed to be absentee. And then it is a plot twist that he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of got that from the way the mom talked about it. She seemed like, I mean, they she gets cut off, but she, I don't know, just something about her tone. It sounded like it was going for dead. It wasn't, it was more so like a sad reveal than a, angry reveal i would expect it to be a bit more passive aggressive it was like oh the father left that was just me i god what where, 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 where else like owen wilson's character fucking sucks and i feel like there's potential there i like the idea of him being an exorcist that's actually just a scummy person who's like trying to scam people that reveal needed to happen way fucking sooner in the movie and you needed to show signs of him being kind of a scummy person like little hints early on before you did that, because he's just kind of a nice and reasonable and helpful person throughout the movie. And then just at the very fucking end of the movie, he's like, nah, man, I was scamming all of you. And then uh, Lakeith Stanfield's like, dude, it's perfectly fine that you did that. Just help us now. <laughs> it, it fucking horrible. Horrible. Um, yeah. 
I missed it. Like I, I, I like got up to get a drink, and then when I came back, you were like ranting about how terrible a reveal that was, and I'm like, wait, what? Owen Wilson's not a priest? What the fuck? <laughs> Him, him being in this just reminds me of that horrible remake of The Haunting from, like, 99. He's in that, too. He has he has actually, like, the funniest death in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets, like, abruptly decapitated by, like, this swinging lion head. <laughs> the original The Haunting from, like, the 50s is, like, one of the best haunted house movies I have ever seen in, like, ever. And then, like, that remake, I'm like, this is trash. This is utter trash. And I saw the remake before I saw the original. I saw the remake in high school. I think that, uh, you know, talking about Danny DeVito and Tiffany Haddish then, because they're the only two left that I haven't really talked about too much, is, like, I, I don't know. It kind of feels like the rank. It's just another. I, I think one one of them being, like, an expert who studied this and one of them being someone who can speak to the dead. I think they're both like solid characters to throw in there. I think Tiffany Haddish and Danny DeVito are both very funny performers. They could work really well in that role. I think it's the script working against them. I, I think it's the reveals working against them. I think it's how they're used working against them. I, I mean, I feel like we've kind of delved into cast a little bit here. We, I mean, I, yeah, but I think it's like such a big part of the movie because it's, it's a, it, to me, this one feels like an ensemble movie. I don't think the first, I don't think Jungle Cruise feels the way. I feel like this movie, the cast is a big part of it. Yeah, and like, Lakeith Stanfield, he's a good actor. He definitely has moments in this film. It really feels like he is here for the paycheck. I, like, I think there are scenes where he does a good job, and I think it's just because he is a good actor. Yeah, well, the but scene I, where he's crying I feel about like, his wife, I, I believed it. I did, I, I genuinely believed it. But I felt like, man, yeah. this performance is, I feel like this performance deserves a better movie. And two, yes. Danny DeVito fucking killed the scene. But I, I feel like for like 80, 90% of the movie, he's just like, yep, I'm here for the paycheck. I do dislike the comedic performance from him. And to be, be honest, I think he is a better dramatic actor than a comedic actor. But he's like, you know, like Black Klansman, not Black, he wasn't in Black Klansman, um, Ju um Judas and the Black Messiah and Get Out. He's playing a very, very fucking serious character in those, and he does it very well. But then, sorry to bother you, he's fucking hilarious in that. He can do comedy. I think the humor in this movie, I just I just don't think they're giving him much to work with. It's the same thing with Tiffany Haddish. It's the same thing with Danny DeVito. These are funny people. It's the script. I'm, 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 it's the Eddie Murphy treatment from the first movie. Yeah, no, and I mean, like Eddie Murphy in the first movie, I do think there are moments where they just say something funny. Tiffany Haddish especially, but even still, like, I think it's way less than what is in the first Haunted Mansion. Tiffany Haddish sneaks in the most funny lines in this. She does, I, I, got, I got a couple of laughs from her, and it's spread throughout the movie. Not a lot, but, I'm not, again, I'm not blaming that on her. It's just, like, yeah, I think she snuck some stuff in. I think she was one of the actors who got to, like, I feel like you get actors that, like, have to follow the script more strictly, and then you find the ones that are allowed to improvise more, because they're more known for improv. And Tiffany Haddish and Danny DeVito strike me as two people that could, like, more so get away with saying whatever they wanted in this. Yeah. I mean, like, that, uh, that scene where, like, Danny DeVito just makes a random comment about Lakeith Stanfield's dead wife eating too much. I'm like, this is something Frank Reynolds would say, and then someone in the show would get mad at him for saying that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. I, I, I see that. <laughs> I mean... You you were talking about it. They kind of do this thing where they'll just, like, pick something and, like, riff on it for, like, a couple seconds. Usually not even that long, but, like, you know, 20, 30 seconds, they'll riff on this, like, same little thing. Yeah. And, and it's like, that is a type of humor that really only works if you are funny, and these people are not. <laughs> or, well, this script is not. This movie is not. The actors, yeah, sure. I, I fucking hate that bit. I was talking to you about when we were watching the movie. Yeah, it, it's like, riffing is the right word to use for that. I sometimes have a hard time explaining it. Yeah, no, it's an unfunny riff. Where It's very often just characters getting fixated on something that's unrelated to the current dilemma. Like, it can be the way that a character pronounces a word. It's kind of like the cool whip bit. But at least when Family Guy did that, it was, like, not that common of a Family thing at that guy? point. Oh, I thought you were just going to say it's Family Guy and they're known for dragging bits on way too long. 
Family Guy might actually drag. Oh, yeah, they do do that, but um, they also do quick pace jokes. But no, I'm just talking about like when it's like, oh, why do you pronounce it that way? Or oh, what do you, why do you think this? Like it's just, and they have to find a way to drag it on as long as possible. I will give this movie credit. There were times where I felt like they were about to do that, and they got through it quicker than I thought they would. Like the scene with Tiffany Haddish saying, like, don't interrupt me or else I'm going to have to start all over. I was ready for a three minute scene there. No, they, they do it. They do do it once where she has to start over once. But they they left it at that. And I was like, I think. Well, I, I mean, the the joke there is just that Tiffany Haddish falls asleep. But it's weird because but, but it's also weird because the second they stop, she's like, oh, what did I just tell you? You know, like they, they still do that. Yeah, no. They, they do it once, but they do it exactly once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, that's bad. that is better. It's only better because it's less painful. It's not better because... It's not better because it's a better joke. It's just like you didn't drag the shitty joke on that long. We haven't talked about Rosario Dawson at all. <laughs> She's fine. Because she does... She does so... She does so little in this movie... She was the, I mean, what are you talking about? She was the very obvious romance interest of Lakeith Stanfield throughout yeah, the entire movie. Yeah, we talked movie. about this a little, but, like, <laughs> they set up, they set up Lakeith Stanfield and the boy having, like, a father-son relationship. There is zero chemistry between her and Lakeith Stanfield. There is not a single moment in the <laughs> film where they even hint at these two having any sort of relationship outside of... Him being a father figure to the kid. <laughs> and, you know, you can, you know, studios need to realize, and I felt like maybe they were for a second, but no, they, at the end with the flowers, they proved that wasn't the case. And also the mention of like, oh, I can get you married. Like, you can have someone be a father figure to a kid without them being married to the mother. In a lot of cases, that is the father. A lot of divorced parents out there. Uh, like, you can do yeah. that. That's, that's, an op- that's an option. You can have someone be there for... A kid without being their fucking father. Father figure, you know? Par- parental figure. That is the thing. I don't know. The only scene where they had any chemistry together, and I don't even think it was good chemistry, but it was arguably chemistry, is the egg pun scene. <laughs> was there anything else other than that? Ah, uh, that scene was excruciating. Fuck you. <laughs> It's not any better when you do it, Matt. <laughs> well, I guess we're laughing more now than we were before, so I got to give it to you. Was, I'm, I'm laughing because I made you upset, <laughs> not because the joke was good. That's the thing with puns. Puns are funny because they make people upset, not because the pun itself is funny. That's why, like, Undertale's one of the only fucking things that ever did pun humor well. It was. There's more to talk about with cast, but like, do we do do we want to just do? Let's maybe we just knock out cast right here, and then we talk about some of the other things we have. Because I um, do have more to talk about. Just yeah, I'm sorry for po- making this so focused on cast. I just felt like in this case, most of what I have to say involves the cast. It's the characters too, but yeah, Danny DeVito and Owen Wilson, incidentally, both returning. Yeah. I straight up forgot Owen Wilson was Marmaduke until I looked. <laughs> And then, and you you know what? Like, we, we joke on this show a lot about, like, oh, Marmaduke, what a masterpiece. Unironically, Marmaduke is a better movie than this. I think I have it ranked higher than Marmaduke, but not by a lot. I think it's, like, a space or two above. I think where I have it is uh, below Dragon Ball Evolution, but above the mean one. But the, you, have to meet, you have to keep in mind, everything in the middle of that list is, like, so interchangeable. yeah. Yeah, no, I feel you. Really, the top five and the bottom five are the only ones you really need to focus on. I think the, there, there's really only two other actors I, I want to mention. One of them is Jamie Lee Curtis as Madame Leota. They have some, like, flashbacks with her, and and she she does get out of the crystal ball at the end. She dresses like a Star Wars character. Well, also, when she's in the crystal ball, they have this weird CG effect placed in her face where she is like, completely unrecognizable, but it's like... Because they stretch her fucking face out for some reason. Yeah, no, I mean, that it, it's an effect that Jennifer Tilly's Madame Leota was doing better yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah, and it was more simplistic, too. It was do, 
it's like this movie was trying to be flashier and it like hurt it in the process. And yeah, I mean like there's so there's so many th- that's this is unrelated to the cast, but like the effects in this film are so much less than they are in the 2003 version. They fucking suck. In the 2003 version, they filmed real people doing stuff and then added a little effect to them to make them look like ghosts. In this, the ghosts are like fully CG and it's not good CG. It, it, I, I, look, I'm, I, I give the benefit of the doubt a lot of times. I try to be charitable sometimes. No, it fucking sucked. It looked fucking terrible in this movie. Almost every effect looked terrible. And I, it's what I was telling you before when we were watching it. It was just like, I feel like a lot of, like, even yeah. the first Haunted Mansion movie, even though, like, I've got problems with that, it's like trying to make an impressive shot first and then using CG to enhance it. This movie uses CG, like, it, 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 CG is its crutch. Yeah, that's no, where it I, I mean, that's just, that's just sort of modern filmmaking for you. Like, back in the day, they really tried with CG. They really were trying to, like... Like, like, they couldn't just completely rely on it for everything. They had to, like, do a little work. And then it's like, okay, but then we're gonna, like, add CG in here to spruce it up. You, you know, it's a This great... movie, it's like, it's all CG, and it's like we were saying before, they don't pay their visual effects people enough, don't give them enough time, and it looks bad. Yeah. If you want a good example for modern times, just for anyone out there that's, like, asking for uh, what's a good example... Uh, I'll bring up a very popular movie from two years ago. Everything, everywhere, all at once. It, the shots were impressive without the CG. The CG is heavy in that movie. It all works really well. Because, like, I, I bring up every... The only reason I bring that one up is, like, CG is clearly used extensively in that movie. But there's... Yeah, they, they actually filmed something first. I don't really consider what a lot of these Disney movies where they're behind a green screen 95% of the time to be quite that. Yeah. The only other actor I wanted to mention is Jared Leto plays the Hatbox Ghost, and it's like, why? <laughs> I guess the voice is fine. It's just the but visual of the character isn't very it could, good. It could have been anyone. That could have been anyone, and you picked Jared Leto. We don't really see his face that much, you know. It's mainly just the C. It's either the I, shadowy I figure or this like CG face. I don't think we see Jared Leto's face at all in the movie. Isn't there, like, a version of him that they show with the skin on? I don't think it's Jared Leto. <laughs> you might be right. Might He may have just been a voice actor in this. It is It is also weird that they kind of, they like, they took, like, the most popular ghost from the ride, and they're like, all right, you, you're the villain. I guess who else are you gonna make the villain, but... Still, like, the, I never got the the impression that the Hackbox ghost was, like, the evil mastermind behind all this. Yeah, I mean, honest to God, if we want to talk about characters from the theme park attraction, 2003 version did much better at that. The, uh, no, oh, like, yeah. Madame Leota is the only character that, like, gets represented in this one, and she got represented more in the first one. Yeah, I mean, there are ghosts from the ride in this, but, like... They do this weird thing where, like, you can't... The the humans can't actually see the ghosts unless they are using, like, this weird specific camera lens... Or it's that a dance Lakeith party. Stanfield at invented. Movie. Well, until that part. But, yeah. like, they, they have to use this lens to see them. And so, for, like, most of the movie, it doesn't look like the right at all. And then there's a scene where, like... Lakeith Stanfield, like, astral projects into, like, the ghost dimension. And I, for one thing, it's when the colors get better. I'll put a pin in that. But it's also, like, the one part of the movie where it, it, like, feels like the ride. Where you can, like, see the ghost dancing around and doing the wild stuff that they're known for in the ride. And, like... It's, it's like, such a small part of the film, and then, like, there's nothing else like the ride until the very end of the movie where they're dancing around in the ballroom and, like, okay, yeah, that's a scene from the ride, but, like... I, I mean, there, I guess there is also the scene where, like, the, the room starts stretching, the floor starts going down, and the paintings all stretch with the room. That's from the ride, but, like... I don't know, it feels it feels like so much of the movie goes by before anything even remotely starts to feel like the ride. Yeah. I also think the visuals are awful in this. Like Fucking this is trash. This is, 
this is an ugly movie. It is so washed out. It is so colorless. It's filmed in these very flat beige colors. There is no contrast to these scenes. The backgrounds are all washed out. The outfits are all washed out. The only time there's like any color is when they go to like the ghost dimension. The ghosts make things colorful. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I'll say this about this movie is it does show that the 2003 movie, if you wanted to accuse that one of not giving a shit at any point, this movie is evidence that they clearly did give somewhat of a shit. The mansion in the 2003 Haunted Mansion, we praised it as like a beautiful set. The sets in this movie look like shit. Yeah, no, they look like shit and the fucking CG ghosts look like shit. And It's, it's the most bland, boring backdrop you could possibly put on this film. It, yeah, no, it, it's terrible. We should talk about, like, the one kind of cool visual in this film, which is when Danny DeVito starts describing the backstory of, like, the villain in this movie. Yeah, that was, and, that was And they, they cut to this, like, pretty fun animated sequence. Like, yeah. it looks good, it's, it's well animated, and it's, like... There's nothing else in the movie like this. Why are we suddenly cutting to this now? Like it's like the one bit of style they they are they are allowed to have in this movie. At the very least, use it for the opening so it can leave a good first impression. I understand that's a manipulation tactic, but I don't think this movie's against that. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you 100. That scene looked really cool. Like really cool. It was it was it was really well done. I if they had that playing throughout the movie, I'd give yeah, it if they just points. did. If they just did little things like that throughout the movie, I think it would have been much improved. Yeah, I agree. Because there's even other scenes where we're getting backstory, and it's it's just, like, regular flashback. Yeah. No, yeah. I also gotta say the way that this movie... Because I talk about that as an opening to this movie. The way that the original opened versus the way this one opened. This one had, like, a really lame opening. Where the original... It was, like, you know, it's... You can kind of poke fun of it how dark it is, like, for a Disney movie, but it leaves an impact on you. The guy's it opens with a fucking suicide. This one uh, opens with, like, a narration. Some guy trying to sound deep, and then we just cut to the bar where our character is, our main character is. It's really, really lame in comparison. I'll give uh, Chase Dillon, the actor for the kid, some props in that opening scene, because he... Gave some pretty goofy expressions. I thought for like a kid act, child performance was pretty good. Later, a- after that first scene, it's just kind of a generic kid. I kind of thought he did a good job in the opening scene, though. He does well enough for a child actor. Yeah. Like, I, he might be better than the two kids from the, the original. I, I definitely agree with that opening scene. It felt like they let him emote a lot. It felt like they uh, tried to show both the terror in his face, but also kind of have a sense of humor with it in that opening scene. I thought that was actually all right. I thought that was, like, executed pretty well. Not the effects, not the not the horror element, but just, like, his reactions. The weird thing with him is, like, there, there's, like, this thing where he's supposed to be, like, dressed up like a nerd all the time. He's always, like, overdressing to go to school and the other kids make fun of him. Yeah. But in, a, in this scene where he has, like, a heart-to-heart with Lakeith Stanfield, he's dressed like a fucking cowboy. <laughs> he's got, like, a... Like a plaid shirt and like a bolo tie yeah (laughs) it's like what what is what child even if they are trying to dress nice is going to dress like this anything else to say about haunted mansion i kind of want to talk a little bit about the way madame leota was introduced because they find her crystal ball and they're like whoa crystal ball and then her face appears in it Everyone's reaction seems a little understated, and it seems like she doesn't want to be there, so she, like, turns away and stops facing them, and Lakeith Stanfield is just kind of like, oh, we can still see you. And then it just, like, cuts away to them doing something else, and it's like, it feels like that was supposed to be a joke. Yeah. But they didn't, like, there was, they, they, there was never, like, a, a, a comedic beat in there where you're like, ah, here's where you laugh, that's where it's funny. Like, it's just so awkwardly staged, and then they just move on. I just don't think they gave a shit. And that's, I mean, that's a lot of the movie. It's just like, they do something kind of awkward, and then they just move on. They do have a lot of awkward humor in this movie, where the character's like, um, okay, oh, you're doing that? Hmm. That's weird. Like, they do that a lot. It's fucking shit. 
Uh, Owen Wilson keeps, like, saying jokes about the ghosts that just, like, aren't funny and kind of kill the tone of the scene. Like, he's trying to rally them to join him, which they do weirdly quickly. Yeah. But he's like, ah, you there, you're kind of scary. Could you, like, face away from me while I'm talking? And it's like, that's not, that's not funny, and it kills the tone. And the ghost listens, so yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, yeah, it's fucking shit the humor in this movie is fucking terrible yes um yeah the thing with this movie is i i do see potential in it i really do and i can like i said i appreciate the ideas behind a lot of these characters and i also appreciate the uh way it tried to separate itself from the first movie like by creating like an alternate obstacle where the haunted mansion can follow them home even though i do feel like that kills a little bit of the horror from the mansion itself uh, but I think that with all of that in in mind, like there's some fun ideas, but I just think the execution there's so much working against it. This this is a bad movie. This isn't an okay movie. This isn't like oh, it's got its good parts and its bad parts. It's a bad movie. No, it's it's pretty bad. There's like a joke or two that works, but that's about it. Anything? Uh, anything else? No, no, I think we've made it to the portion of the evening where we got a vote. I'm pretty sure I know exactly which way this is going, but Michael, which of these do you think is better? It's going to be Jungle Cruise for me. Yeah, that probably was obvious. Yeah, no, I'm with you. It's it's Jungle Cruise, and it's Jungle Cruise by kind of a decent margin. And the audience is with us. It's It's like... Two thirds to one third Jungle oh. Cruise on this one, although all of the comments are in support of Haunted Mansion. Weirdly enough, huh? Like I said, I kind of understand like the fun of the ensemble cast, like with the ideas behind them. I just don't, I don't think one of them was executed properly. Um, but I, you know, like I, I like the cast. I like the idea behind it. I that that's not enough though. You have, you actually have to like go out and make something worthwhile and i don't think they did yeah i agree jungle cruise wins i was i was thinking about like ending this by asking you like oh well which haunted mansion do you think was better but i think we've kind of made our position on that clear too 2003 is better (laughs) the 2003 one's better in like nearly every regard right yeah it's like I think if this movie executed its ideas properly, it'd be better than that one. But it's like, the, I, like I said, I, I like the ideas behind each character. I do, but like, you gotta, that doesn't mean anything when you execute them so poorly. Because I like, like I said, Owen, using Owen Wilson's character as an example. I like the idea of this character who goes in there with ill intent and then kind of changes by the end of it. He starts to feel guilt because he grows an attachment to these I, I've played, like, RPGs that have a character like that, and I grow attached to them, and I feel the betrayal, but I also feel the, uh, wanting to see them get back on a good track. At, but they, they fucking... You, that's why you do it while you still have time to adjust. I just think Owen Wilson's a fucking douchebag by the end of this because of that. <laughs> like, and I think the others are fucking idiots for, like, letting that one go. <laughs> I, did anyone besides Lakeith Stanfield even find out about that by the I, end of the movie? Not on screen, at least. <laughs> oh yeah, his, uh, his. By the way, his cat was named Tater Tot. Oh yeah, he, he fucking yeah, no, stole someone's ca- cat. There's a cat that just appears at the beginning of the movie, and then the cat's just there at the end of the movie, and his name is Tater Tot. Which, like, haha, his wife ate Tater Tots. What a shitty fucking parallel! <laughs> what a shitty but, fucking parallel! But also, like, the the cat has a collar. And most cats, like, even cats with owners tend not to have collars. If that cat had a collar, clearly he belongs to someone. Clearly that is someone's cat. I think what the movie is going for is he didn't have the collar at the start of the movie, and now he does, so it's like, oh. It's like, he's been given a gift. When did they ever establish that these spirits can do this? When did they ever establish that his wife is aware of where he is right now? Well, when did they establish okay, they any kinda, of this fucking shit? They kind of give us this like, oh, well, sometimes like 
uh, the the dead loved one I have, I could like some little thing will happen and I'll know it's them. Like Tiffany Haddish has like the uncle who or the father who was like really yeah. into model trains, and she hears the train horn. But that's sometimes. way more subtle than what he experienced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I we we wrapped up the episode and we're still bitching about this movie. I'm sorry. Let's let's move on. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh that I mean that's just proof of how bad it is. Yeah. Uh next time on Hollow Victories. So next time on Hollow Victories, it's the third anniversary of the show. Woo! So uh since the first episode was the fourth installment of the Batman series with uh, a female-centric spinoff, and the first anniversary was the fourth installment of the Superman series with a female-centric spinoff, I think it's time to go back to the less hated but still generally not considered good third installments of those series for Superman 3 versus Batman Forever. All right. I guarantee it'll be better than this fucking I, episode. I, oh, I, I, I think this was a great <laughs> episode. I just don't think the movie was good. <laughs> I think this. Uh, I think this was like. I think this I, was one of our best episodes, honestly. I mean, it's it's always fun when we like just just go like, oh fuck this movie, right? Let no, me I fucking I felt, Adam. I felt no. I mean, I think it's partially because it's Disney. Like, I felt no fucking sympathy here. Like, fuck <laughs> off. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. I'm Batman Forever. Uh, why is there something about that one that just strikes me as like? Is there like some sort of meme in our friend group? involved in that movie like I, I don't know something about that just feels i might just be thinking of batman and robin again i don't think so nothing i'm aware of all right yeah i'm ready for it let's do it batman and superman 3 oh yeah and will will you've never seen tim burton's batman right i have you have okay i, I saw was gonna... i saw his oh yeah is that out of the ring i was gonna suggest that for out of the ring but if you've seen it Maybe we'll do well, Superman 2, because I know you never did Super... Because uh, no. this was before Out of the Ring, but I told you to watch Superman 1 before okay. we did... To be... Yeah, I did watch Superman 1. Um, to be fair with Batman, I might be... I, I I definitely watched Batman Returns. I definitely watched the second one with the Penguin. I'm, uh, the first one? Maybe I didn't see the first one, actually. I, I, I think... No, I think you're right. I think I, I think I only saw the second one. I don't think I saw the first one, so if we want to do that, that's fine. All right, but potentially we are doing Out of the Ring on Batman. That might take a while to come out because I did. It took me like three months to do that fucking uh, Wreck It Ralph Out of the Ring. That's, did that's fine. At least she got it out. Uh, I did. This was fun. Yeah. All right. Well, th- thank you for joining me. Thank you everyone for listening. For my co-host Michael Shadackle, I'm Matt Presents. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. You will return.